As you read in chapter 5, code sets are dynamic shortcuts to collections of codes. This means that the codes that belong to code sets remain in their location in the main code system, but can additionally be accessed via the code sets. In this video, we show what code sets look like and a few of the ways that you can act upon them. Common actions can be taken on all components, and these are covered in the later video on the project as a whole. But in this video, we'll focus on the actions specific to code sets. Adding or removing members. Activating to focus attention or limiting an operation to only some codes. Combining code sets and interrogating code sets. It's worth noting that although code sets are similar in some ways to document sets, in terms of the actions that can be taken on them, there are some important differences as well. In particular, the options for interrogating code sets and visualising them are currently limited when compared to document sets. But this may change with future software updates. Code sets in MaxQBA are listed at the bottom of the code system. Before we look at ways of creating them, let's just be clear about how they function. I said earlier they are dynamic shortcuts, which means that the codes within code sets actually live in the main code system. We're just creating the ability to group codes on different bases by adding them to code sets. So let's just have a look. If I open up a couple of code sets, we can see the codes that belong to them. But if we open up some of the code system, we'll see by looking at the family support code that this is where the, that code actually lives, but we've got shortcut access to it from the different code sets. We can see that code sets contain shortcuts to codes by looking at the icons associated with the codes within the code sets. We have a shortcut icon, whereas the codes in the main code system don't have that shortcut icon. Our access to the codes within the code sets, however, is the same as it would be if we were accessing them from the main code system, because these codes are the same codes. So for example, if I retrieve the coded segments at family support in the overview window, then the eight coded segments I have access to here are the same eight coded segments as I would be given access to if I opened up the overview from the main code system. You can also see that the same code can belong to more than one code set. So the family support code we've been looking at has been added not only to this codes I'm not sure about yet set, but also to the practicality set and the same code can be added to any number of code sets. And that's a key thing about code sets really, it's what underlies their potential power as analytic and practical entities. You're never duplicating codes or coding by putting codes into sets, you're only gaining access to them from a different place. There's a whole host of reasons why you might make use of code sets in a research project both analytically and practically. So for example, I've got some practical sets here. The codes I'm not sure about set, for example, can help keep track of codes. You know that you need to go back and reconsider and refine. Maybe you're not ready to do that right now, but putting them into that code set just reminds you that they need revising later on. Later on in the study, Sets containing codes that will be used to write particular articles or reports. Here I've got an Article 1 set. Can be useful for organising your outputs. This set doesn't have any codes in it yet, but I can just drag codes in as I start to realise which particular aspects I want to be writing about when I'm generating my narrative about that particular article or output. And of course, I can remove a code from a code set at any time just by right clicking and removing it. 
that doesn't delete the code itself, it still remains in the code system. I'm just removing my shortcut access to it from that particular code set. There are other ways of populating code sets, but I'm not going to show you those in this video because our focus isn't on teaching you to operate Max VBA, but just to get you thinking about how code sets might be useful. More analytic sets in this project relate to the key aspects of the interpretation. So, for example, we have code sets for expressions of positivity, social political effects, and problematic uses and experiences. And these have various codes listed in them. You've probably noticed when I've been showing you code sets that all the codes in the code sets are hanging at the same level. We can't replicate the, the um, visual hierarchy that we have in the main code system. Uh, they're all listed at the same level, but we can see the hier their hierarchical position uh, by looking at uh, the way that the codes are named when they're in the code set. So let's have a little think about the actions that we can take on code sets other than creating them and populating them. As usual, right-clicking shows us actions. So for example, if I right-click on expressions of positivity, there's various things I can do. I can activate the codes uh, within that code set. And of course, if I've got document sets coded as well, when I've got my retrieve segments window open, I've now got in my retrieve segments window all of the coded segments for any of the codes that belong to that code set, expressions of positivity, and the documents that I activated in this example, focus groups. So code sets are a good way of creating focused retrieval through the, the ability to activate on that level. Other actions we can take on code sets are to generate various overviews. We can get an overview of coded segments, for example, and this shows us all of the coded segments for any of the codes that belong to this particular code set. In addition, we can get an overview of documents, telling us which documents have any of those codes applied to them and various other overviews as well. However, it is worth noting that there are some differences with the actions that we can take on individual codes from their position in a code set if we compare that to the actions that we can take from the same codes from their position in the main code system. I'll just show what I mean by right clicking. If I right click on an individual code, uh, then I have a different and reduced set of actions to choose from than I do when I right click on a code in the main code system. It's not that we can't take these actions on codes from within the code sets, it's just that we have to start the process from the code system. I mentioned earlier that there are also some differences with respect to what we can do with code sets when we compare to the actions that we can take on document sets. One of those is what we can do with maps. So I'm just going to open up a map. I'll just create a new map quickly. And you'll know more about maps from watching the video on maps, but I can drag a, code, a document set into a map, but that's not possible with code sets. I just can't get them in. Equally, I can't get individual codes from within code sets into a map. I have to access those codes from their main position in the code system. Another difference when we compare document sets to code sets are some of the options when we're interrogating. So if I go to the visual tools and show you the code matrix browser, then you'll see that I can ask for columns for document sets 
but we don't have similar options for comparing codes according to the sets that they belong to. However, some of these differences may change with future updates. This completes the demonstration of code sets. So I now invite you to read the next section of chapter five, which is on comments, and then watch the video for that component.